Good afternoon, everybody. Just waiting a couple moments to trickle in. While we're waiting, my name is Tom Bunn. I'm an associate on the iSelect Fund Ventures team. I'm excited to welcome you all to our discussion today. Uh, this is Agri-Food Conversations brought to you by iSelect Fund, the Van Trump Report, the Yield Lab Institute, and Family Farms Group. As many of you know, Agri-Food Conversations is all about driving innovation in food and ag. Each month, we highlight a specific theme, and this month's theme is cattle technologies. On today's call, we are joined by Melissa Brandau, founder and chief revenue officer for Herd Dog. Herd Dog's animal traceability platform combines in-field hardware, a digital management platform, and data science to help producers monitor herd well-being, deliver precision animal care, and keep track of every animal under their care. The company's patented ear tag technology collects animal identification, location, movement, and welfare at long range, delivering that directly to the user's phone so they can check on their herd from anywhere at any time. Each of you knows companies are more likely to succeed with the right network of customers, talent, investors, and advisors. We've invited you to this call because you are some of the smartest, most talented people in herd dogs market. You are potential customers for their products and services. You've built a similar company to herd dog or you have unique expertise and understand the challenges and opportunities that Herd Dog may face. Before we get started, we have a quick poll question to get a better idea of who we have on the call today. Please take a few seconds to answer. And a few process comments while the poll is running. We are not soliciting investment in any way whatsoever. This presentation is to provide information to help Herd Dog find customers, mentors, or other strategic relationships that can help them grow their business. Secondly, you can use the Q&A box to ask a question at any time, and we will answer as many questions as time allows at the end of the presentation. Finally, this web webinar is being recorded and will be available for replay. So without further delay, I'm pleased to introduce Melissa Brandau, Founder and Chief Revenue Officer of Herd Dog. Thanks for joining us, Melissa. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Tom. And welcome to all of you. Thank you very much for the opportunity to just speak about Herd Dog and uh, tell you what we're doing. Her dog was founded in 2015 by myself based on a, a clear defined need that producers had when working with their animals out in the field to be able to identify them more quickly and more readily. The company started on the basis of a Bluetooth platform, Bluetooth protocol for our technology, and we have stayed with that as Bluetooth has continued to rise as a as a um, viable protocol for uh, longer and longer range. So here today, I'm really going to talk to you a little bit more about what we've done over the past few years to really expand our opportunity, both on the technology side, as well as on our, our software platform. So her dog is really set out to be the animal traceability platform. Let's see. We really have three components to our service. ARC is our animal record collection. It was the uh, foundational part of our business where we're able to track biometrics on individual animals, both in terms of our tags and the data that our tags collect, which is automatically transmitted into ARC, but also additional information such as treatments and protocols that are applied to individual animals. So the power of being able to track that individual's animal data through the system, through their life cycle, and be able to transfer that individual data out of the system or to other people. And I'll get into that in a little bit more detail later. The second area is our Grange. The Grange is a third party platform for products and services that are ancillary to herd dog. So being able to bring in scale and scale technology and integrate with other equipment partners, as well as local vendors such as animal transportation, vets or labs, or even research, um, research companies that might be able to or, or want to work with <clears throat> producers and their, their animal data. And then the final area, our newest is digital inspector. And that really goes to supporting not only producers and the animals that they're raising, but being able to help them manage their programs, whether it's a quality program or a welfare program. So again, back to this idea that uh, we're looking at a traceability platform, we really look to solve the problem of helping producers raise more, uh, 
make more money from every animal that they raise. So these three components, these three elements of our service are intended to do just that. So looking at it sort of horizontally across our platform, we have the hardware. The hardware implement can be used in all elements of the service, these three components that I spoke of. The hardware uh, is an ear tag, which attaches to the animal's ear. It looks like this, a very simple lightweight ear tag. Again, it's Bluetooth based. The ear tag, this particular ear tag is our welfare tag. It connects to the animal's ear. It also connects to the animal's record within the service. Our platform supports both web as well as mobile. We, what we found is that mobile is becoming more and more of the, the primary um, application for, for producers because they can use that in point of care. So treating the animal directly in the field or interfacing with that animal's individual data in the field becomes very powerful and allows the producer to communicate specifics to that moment in time but also to be able to communicate with other uh, partners or you know part of their team if something needs to be done to that animal the the three elements integrate directly with the hardware system so that you're able to get things like in-field protocols smart equipment integration as i mentioned and then chain of custody and digital audits I always keep doing that the wrong way. So the hardware family, I'm going to spend more, more time on this slide just because it becomes very relevant to, to how our system works overall. The trace tag, which is actually a yellow tag, not an orange tag, but the welfare tag, this one in particular, tracks biometrics in addition to the traceability and animal identification. Our trace tag um, works as just an ID only tag. It's sort of our our response to an RFID tag. And then the dog bone, the dog bone reader today looks like this. It's a little bit bigger than a cell phone. The dog bone reader can be uh, powered for two days in the field if you wanted to do it that way, or you could keep it plugged in and the reader would be perpetually gathering data. Or the final option, which is our most uh, common use, is the dog bone is installed in this thing we call the dog house. And the dog bone and the dog house together can be set outside in remote areas where data collection doesn't necessarily happen if humans aren't there. But we've really made the system very portable and, and mobile. So wherever your animals are, the system can be installed. Bluetooth does not need any kind of Wi Fi infrastructure, as you know. So the Bluetooth to dog bone communication is constant and what we call ad hoc. The dog bone is connected to a cellular connection, which is built into the dog bone reader and transmits that data on in regular frequencies of about 20, every 20 minutes to the cloud. On the welfare tag, the data is sensor data as well as identification. So it's tracking things like animal heats or estrus detection, as well as changes in an animal's biometrics, whether that animal has slowed down considerably or is doing something that's different from their standard benchmark. Our system tracks individual animals as individual animals, meaning we're looking at their own, their own um, set of benchmarks. And then we use that in order to to determine whether that animal is in distress or in heat or something else might be going on with the animal. So every animal has their own level of biometrics and being able to identify individual animals within that is pretty powerful. The dog bone reader, as I said, can be used in, in a wide array of environments. It can be put out with the animals. It can be installed in a barn. Using Bluetooth, we have far less issues around interference because it's a low frequency. So very much so less interference that you might find in ultra high frequency tags. I'm just going to tell you right here that these numbers, the data plan numbers are going to be updated. These are um, higher than they actually will be. We do about, it's about $250 to $300 a year. The pricing basically is a data plan on the dog bone. Everything else is bought up front. It enables us to allow producers to feel okay about the tag staying with the animal when it leaves the farm, when it's sold. 
The dog bones remain as an asset. I can continue to track those animals that, that are still there. And then I'll mention the Sky Dog. The Sky Dog is a drone. The, the dog bone just attaches directly onto the bottom of the DJI drone, and it can be used to scan your herd, do herd counts, herd checks, and, and so forth and so on. So if you're looking to do uh, fast counts of your animals over a wide distance or remotely, the Sky Dog is a good system for that. We're starting to see uses and use cases in both feedlots as well as sort of very remote leased lands. Um, the, I think the really nice thing with the system overall is it's it's inexpensive. You do have the dog bone reader that reads the data automatically on an ongoing basis, but you can also interface with your phone and the app on your phone, which enables, which is pretty unique, right? Because a Bluetooth tag um, is able to connect directly to the phone. And as a result of that, you have more access to the animal, the individual animal, as well as the animal's record sort of automatically pulls up as you start to read that animal's information. The last thing over here I'll just mention is Stardog. So Stardog is a satellite alternative to what we're currently doing with Dogbone on a cellular network. Our partner in this, in this endeavor is a company called Swarm. They've been, they, they created a low earth satellite solution. So considered very similar to our strategy around low price point, the Stardog system will be a fairly um, competitive product and enable us to be able to use our dog bones in more and more remote areas where we know broadband and rural broadband is, is quite an issue. So the last thing that I really wanted to dig into is something um, newer on our service in addition to those three elements that I talked about, which is our traceability initiative. So over the past year and a half, there's been a considerable amount of um, effort and concern, I think, from the consumer in general as to where their meat's coming from. And so we responded by creating a system that enables a producer to generate an individual QR code for each animal and identify specific types of data to be delivered depending upon who the consumer of that data is. So this particular QR code, if you were to scan it, you would see that it would pull up information on Luck Car Cattle Company. He's our pilot producer in this effort. He's based here in Jackson, Wyoming, and he owns his entire, he's vertically integrated. He owns the entire process from the cow-calf operation to delivery to his local Whole Foods. So we're, we're gonna be putting QR codes on his meat. It will identify the individual meat type, how long it's been aged, the miles traveled, and really any other field that, that Lockhart would like to share with his consumer. But the same QR code is used in, within his processing plant. So he's able to print that QR code and use it as a, a logistics traceability reference for the animals as they go through the, the slaughtering process. And that in this way, we're sort of tying together the food supply by providing the cow-calf operator a QR code that stays along with the data that stays with the animal throughout the process, gives us not just the tag ID, but gives us off, offline, off-tag identification readily and easily. And again, that identification is really dependent upon who the audience is. So the consumer will see one set of data, the um, packing house or processor would see another type of data. And so we're starting to roll this program out. We call it the Wyoming Traceability Initiative merely because the work in Wyoming is fairly unique. Wyoming has some interesting regulation around their what they call their Food Freedom Act, which enables producers to sell direct to consumers as well as into restaurants and retail stores without the same um, regulatory oversight that, uh, that is present in most other states. So we're pretty excited about not only that hardware suite of products that we offer, but being able to allow this a QR code system to be integrated into them to create what we consider to be the, the true traceability platform. And that's really it. I, I know that was brief, 
but I'm hoping that that you have questions and that I can offer more insight as a result of those. Excellent. Thank you, Melissa. I really appreciate you taking some time. So now we have some time for some Q&A. As I mentioned, uh, there are a couple of ways to, to ask Melissa a question. You can raise your hand and we can unmute you and, and you can ask Melissa directly, or you can go down to the Q&A pane at the bottom of your Zoom app and type in a question there. But I guess just to get things started, Melissa, curious about um, kind of the biggest draw you're seeing on the animal welfare front for ranchers. What's really causing them to make the purchase decision? Is it location, ID, estrus combination? And then we'd love to hear about kind of uh, product roadmap and uh, what what the product roadmap looks like over the next you know, 12, 18 months and beyond. I think the driving force on the beef side is that we're a system that enables heat detection in the field. So animals no longer have to be tethered to the barn or inside a a facility for that information to be discovered. We've been able to confirm that estrus heat is possible both in field and in the barn. And because most animals are out in the field, I think that's the primary driver behind interest in herd dog. And then I'd say secondarily to that, it's really the potential with traceability and generating individual QR codes, just as we've seen in restaurants over the past year as a result of COVID and no one, no one being able to touch their menu anymore. People are starting to get used to that idea that data is accessible in such a, a smooth and easy way. And that appeal to the consumers of providing deeper insights into animal well-being and, and quality gives producers an opportunity to really tout what they're doing, what, what makes it different. So that I think is exciting. As far as our roadmap goes, this is our new product. So these, these tags can be read by the dog bone at, at 100 to 150 yards range. It's quite definitely the best readability on the market today. And, you know, if you look at the price point versus some of the competition, I think we really are in kind of a, a unique place from pricing perspective. The next thing on our roadmap really is to build the um, two things. We're coming out with our health tag in 2022. That's That was our original design. We have it patented, but we're adding in a more robust ear temperature sensor so that it's, it's just working in more environments and working more accurately. So that'll be what we call outer ear temperature sensing, uh, which we, like I said, we've got a lot of patents around that because that's really a, a very good indicator of change in animals' biometrics. Their ears cool or they heat up depending upon what's going on with them. And so it's a, a pretty strong means of, of being able to see changes in biometrics. Um, We've also, we're going to be working on a more sophisticated expansion of our digital auditing platform so that we can do more in real time and more remote to help assist in the auditing process for programs. Got it. That's a good segue into my next question, which is about the programs. So do you have an ideal type of program? I know, and the last time I spoke with you guys that the program market is much bigger than I thought it was. Can you talk about kind of where you are in that, in, in you know, establishing partnerships with, with programs and what the ideal partnership looks like? We will be making an announcement about one of our first partners here in the next um, three weeks or so, um, but we're really looking at partner partners that are unique to their particular industry or a region that have a good, um, strong following or constituency. I think more and more programs are starting to come out as a result of, you know, a keen interest from the consumer to capture more of that understanding of those animals. And I think it's really working with programs that are well identified or have, you know, a, a a group represented or even you know a brand of its own to be able to tie in some of the traceability 
uh, program work that we're doing, I think that's really our ideal is to have existing programs that have a, a well-established name and reputation that we can work with. So programs or brand programs, either one. We've looked at some very large ones. The one that we're launching with, I think, is, is well known enough that people will recognize it. And uh, there's plenty out there for us to do both on the quality and welfare side. Terrific. Well, um, love to end these by by asking you how the audience, both live today and those who will watch retroactively, how they can help you. What's how, I see your contact information is there, but but how can our uh, fairly wide list of distribution attendees help you and her dog? Well, we're always looking for good candidates as far as producers go, always looking for new producers to work with. You know, we're, we're international, so we work in Brazil and Australia, as well as the United States. We are always looking for new third-party vendor and or partners that would work with us on the Grange. We, we love to work on research projects whenever possible, so there's any candidates that have a specific need around trying to understand animal behavior or animal motion or something to that effect much we're very interested in in that as well yeah i think you know as much as we can to be able to cultivate interest in working with her dog we're a very easy platform to work with terrific well melissa thank you so much for joining us uh thank today you. to all the attendees thanks for joining us as well as I mentioned, uh, a replay of this will be available within the next 24 hours. So if you know somebody who may be interested, uh, please point them into uh, agrifoodconversations.com. And then, as you know, we, we host these conversations every Thursday at 3 p.m. Central. This month's theme, as I mentioned, is cattle technologies. Next week, we'll, we will be joined by Frank Wooten, the CEO of Vents, a digital platform that reduces the cost and increases the environmental sustainability of pastured livestock production. So please join us next week if you're if you're interested and we will hopefully see you then. Thanks again. Thank you.